Hello, if you watch my GX78 video, you'll know that this TV suffered a mishap during the recording of that video. The camera I was working on fell over while I had various flying leads connected to it, and that included one to the composite video input of this TV. I believe what's happened is that the composite input has been shorted to some voltage from the camera and it's blown something. The result is that there's no video or sync on the composite input. On the RF there seems to be some remnant of video but no sync. It's difficult to tell because it won't tune now. The search just goes straight past the channel. With the RGB input there's video but no sync as if the horizontal hold needs adjusting. The sync for the RGB SCAR is provided by the composite pin. This TV is model number 15CE 1518. It uses the Philips CP90 chassis. It's not a live chassis. The secondary side of the power supply is isolated from the mains by a transformer. That means we can connect the oscilloscope to that side of the circuit without having to use an isolation transformer because there's essentially one built into the TV. If we need to probe the primary side, we would still need to isolate it, but I don't think we'll need to do that. Here's part of the circuit. The composite input comes in here. It's connected in parallel with the composite input from the SCART socket, and it goes to here, which is the IF and SYNC module. It enters at pin 13 and goes to this switch. The other input to this switch is the demodulated video from the aerial. It exits here at pin 16. As the fault's affecting both the RF and the composite, and since this is the first thing that this input's connected to, I think this will be a good place to start looking. I'll have a look at what the signal looks like going in and coming out, and I'll also check the supplies to the module. This is the IF and SYNC module, you can see it's quite difficult to get at to service because it's got this screen around it, but those input and output pins are accessible from the bottom of the board. Ok this is the IF and SYNC module here, these are the pins. I'm supplying the TV with a composite video signal and I've got it switched to the composite input and I'm going to test pin 13 first which is where the signal enters and that looks alright so now I'll check pin 16 which is where it leaves after that switch And that doesn't look very good. So I'm guessing that that switch is faulty. Now there's no schematics for this IF module. It's considered not to be a serviceable part. You're supposed to replace it all as a single module. But obviously I can't do that because you know you can't get parts like that now. So I'm going to have to look at the board and follow the signal from that pin 13 and see where it's going what components doing the switching and see if I can replace it. What I'm going to have to try and do first is to desolder this screening can. It's held in by four little pegs that are soldered underneath. There's one there, one there, two more on the other side. Oh, well, my soldering iron seems to have stopped working. Just one thing after another. Fortunately, I have got a spare one, which is this. It's not as good as that other one, but at least it's getting hot.
that's the board. It's kind of difficult to get in through a better view, like a face on view, because there's this other board there. But we should be able to trace where the signal goes by looking at the other side of the board. Right, this is pin 13, and it comes in here, up here, via this capacitor. Then to pin 4 of this chip, which is a TDA5850. Right, so this is the TDA5850. It's a video switch and amplifier circuit. We've got the video from the composite input coming in at pin 4. And the demodulated video enters at pin 8. Pin 3 is the select input. And the selected video goes to this video amplifier and emerges at pin 5. The chip's got two outputs, video plus and minus, but they're just using the plus. The pin 5 is connected directly to pin 16 of the module, which is where we saw that poor looking video signal. So it looks like this chip's probably damaged. Right, so I'm going to remove this chip. It's a little bit awkward to get to because this is kind of in way, but could be worse. It's not as bad as these ones down here. lifted but it's not connected to anything so it doesn't really matter that much and there's the chip I've removed the chip and I've set up a little test circuit so we can test it in isolation just to confirm that it is this chip that's at fault not something it's connected to distorting the signal. So the video comes in here this to this 75 ohm termination resistor. It's coupled through this capacitor to pin 4. We've got the select pin held at 12 volts to select that input. I'll supply a signal and probe pin 5. So yeah, you can see it's definitely this chip. What's pin 4 look like? See, pin 4 doesn't look too bad. That's the other uh, video output. A different uh, DC offset. Uh, pin 6, sorry, not pin 4. Oh, same pin 4 for. Yeah, I'll order a new chip and uh, try it and see if that solves the problem. Okay, I've got the replacement chip, so I'll fit that and then we'll see where we are. Big this tip really, I should have changed it. Not the best bit of soldering ever, but do the job. Alright, we'll get a test. Right, so I'll give it another try. Ah, there we are. That seems to be working all right. 
picture looks kind of soft but I'm not sure if it's just this tape to be honest I've set the white balance on camera and picks it up a bit better it does look a bit soft as I said that could just be this tape I'll try some other video sources ok let's see if we can tune to a channel Oops, wrong button. Yeah, it's found a channel. That actually look, seems to look sharper than through the uh, composite. Let's compare the two. That's composite. That's the, the aerial. Oh, that looks a bit more washed out. There could be some sharpening circuit before the um, RF modulator that's not in the the composite video output though. Try the RGB SCART next. That's working. That looks pretty good. Right, so that's the TV working again. Fortunately, the chips they've used are off the shelf parts that are still available. We'll just have a quick look at how that signal that comes out of pin 5 of the chips meant to look. This is pin 4. And that's pin 5. Just bring it down again, it's amplified. But no surprises really there. Just a video signal. Is it half a volt? One. About two and a half volts. So what I'm going to do now is just neaten up that solder in a bit with a different tip and then put the TV back together and that's that done. Well, that's that TV, Philips CP90, working again, ready to go back on duty as my workbench test monitor. Thanks for watching, bye for now.